anointing that eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has our hearts comprehended that which you shall be for the saints. But the scripture says the Spirit of God hath revealed it unto us. Even now we charge this atmosphere with the prophetic thrust. Elevate us in the spirit. Release dimensional anointings. Move us into new realms. Bring us out of a carnal state. Loose resurrection power. May your voice be the sound of a multitude of waters in this room. Hey! Yeah! Let us hear clearly. Let us see clearly. Give us high feet for high places. We ascend the hill of the Lord. We ascend the mountain of God. And we remove ourselves from these low and wasteless places. Father, we thank you for moving us from the valley to the mountain. Hey, let blinded eyes be open. Deaf ears be open. Let us hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. I release prophetic agitation in the Spirit. Agitate us. Bring us out of our comfort zone and bring us into a place where we are urging to do what you are telling us to do. And we give you glory. We give you glory. We give you praise. And the apostolic and prophetic urge together. Bring us out of apathy and bring us into urgency. We, Father, into the demand of the hour and we move at an accelerated pace catch us up in the spirit catch us up in the spirit redeem the time restore the years bring us out of our lacking and bring us to the forefront of what you're doing in the earth and we give you praise we give you praise we give you honor we give you we give you glory the prophetic we praise in the world. We give you praise. Come on, release the people of God. We give you praise. Before they say we one word, glory. release in the room. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you Bring praise. Bring us out of the dust. We give you glory. Elevate us in the
Do you know that this morning? Hey, he reigns forevermore. to it and there's no end to it it's forever I'm so grateful that I serve a God that's alive and he's moving in this place you reign forever Lord to reign forever, Lord. We're going to worship you forever. Forever. As long as we have breath in our bodies. We're going to worship you. We're going to worship you. We're going to worship you. Father, we worship you. of who you are. <laughs> Father, you're sovereign and you're holy. Yeah. Oh, how majestic is your name in all the earth. God, we worship you. We worship you. Come on, lift up your voices. Come on, lift up your worship. Come on, make this atmosphere. Come on.
Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. And whosoever calls Jesus, Jesus. upon the name of the Lord Jesus, Jesus. shall be delivered. Jesus, Jesus. They shall be delivered. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 now everybody give him praise in the room. Yeah. Come on, let me hear you lift your voice to the risen Lord. Lift him in the room. Lift him in the room. Lift him in the room. would be scattered so we command every enemy we command every hindrance we command every sickness we command all depression as we lift him in the room as we lift him in the room the train of his robe is filling the temple and every knee must bow and every tongue confess Jesus, Jesus, we lift you in the room. We lift you in the room. We lift you in the room. You reign. You rule. You've got all power. We lift you in the room. So there's victory in the room. 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 Victory. Victory in, victory in the room there's healing in the room healing in the room healing in the room healing in the room everybody give a praise in the room we praise you in this space we praise you in this room let me deal with this very quickly the spirit of God is in the room right now the presence of God is here now, there's more of his presence he wants to reveal to us. Here's what I understand. Some of you, the first time coming here, first time in this environment, like, man, they're passionate, they're very intense. Well, first of all, our God is a consuming fire. Fire is intense. It's intense. And then we understand that when we praise, our team is not up here singing to make us feel better. They're not singing to entertain us. They're not singing so that we have a good vibe before the preacher gets up. They're singing because God is enthroned in the praises of his people. Yes. Now I was praying for you and praying for what God wants to do. Yes, sir. And I was on my face. I was like, God, move every hindrance in me, anything that would hinder what you desire to do. And the Holy Spirit said, here's the problem. There are some who should be engaging that are spectating. I don't need you trying to be, figure out everything that's going on. Sometimes you just need to get lost in praise because sometimes we have atmosphere detectives. I don't need you to be an atmosphere detective. I need you to be a worshiper because he's worthy. Oh yes. Because while you're detecting, you're detracting. My God. Oh God. But when the praise goes up, it's just that simple. When we lift him in the room, what else is there to do but lift him in the room? What else is there to do but lift him in the room? What else is there to do than lift him in the room? We lift you what else is there to do than lift him in the room? We lift you in what else is there to do than lift him in the room? What else is there to do than lift him in the room? And when we call him Jesus, Jesus, and when we call him Jesus, Jesus, there's nothing else to do but call his name and lift him up and lift him up and lift so we lift you in the room. Jesus, 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 we lift you in the room. We lift you in the room. Jesus, 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 we lift you in the room. We lift you in the room. Jesus, 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 we lift you in the room. We lift you in the room. Hear me, hear me. So 
listen. Jesus. First time, I ain't fussing, trust me. <laughs> Jesus, I'm passionately Jesus. teaching. Here's why. What do you do? He said, Bishop, what do I do? They sing the song I never heard of. Okay. There are three types of songs that the Spirit of God breathes on. Psalms, these are songs that declare his victory. Hymns, these are songs that declare his worth and his wonder and what he's done. Then there are spiritual songs like, We lived you in the room. Lived you in the room. You've never read it before. You've never found the lyrics online. It's just what the Holy Spirit's releasing in an atmosphere. So you say, how do I engage in a moment like that? You can wave your hand. Say what they're saying. You can leap if you want to. You can dance and spin if you want to. But you can't be scrolling on your phone. You know, we're scrolling our phone and say, God didn't touch me today. You were consumed with your timeline. You weren't consumed with the throne. But whatever you do, if you say, Mr. it kind of hurt my knees to leap. Don't leap then. Just bounce. <laughs> and wave those hands. You understand what I'm saying? But here's what I need you to do. We're about to go back into this real quick. We're going to spend 120 seconds on this next praise. And when we begin to sing, whatever you think he's worth, My God. praise him like that. I ain't judging it. Whatever you think he's worth, give him that much praise. Can we do that in the room? I said, can we do that in the room? Are you ready? One, two, three, so we live to in the room. 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 Cause you reign upon the throne. So we live to in the room. You reign upon the throne. We lift you in the room. Jesus, 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 Savior, Jesus, 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 You're the blind man healer. You're the curse breaker. You are the chain breaker. You're Jesus, Jesus. You're a mighty deliverer. Jesus, Jesus. You're the cleaner of my soul. You're the filler of my life. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 everybody give it. How you lift it up? 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 You are how you lift it up? 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 Jesus, Jesus. How you lift it up? Jesus, Jesus, how you lift it up? 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 You reign upon the throne.
Victory is yours. Victory is yours. Victory is yours. Before the law, dance before the law. We dance before the law. We dance, we dance, we dance. Dance before the law. Before the Lord, victory is yours. So we dance before the Lord. You sit upon the throne. 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 So we say, Worthy, worthy, worthy. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Worthy, worthy, worthy. You were on your job and you thought about the goodness of the Lord and you didn't have anywhere to praise. But now you got a moment to praise him. Come on, let's just begin to bless his name. We love you, Jesus. As we lift him up, the chains are falling up. As we lift him up, the chains are falling up. And as I give you praise, you will fight for me. As I, give on, you prayer, as I give you prayer, you will fight for me, fight for, me. for the battle is not yours. The battle is not the battle yours. Is the Lord. And as I lift you up, you will fight for me. 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 So victory is yours. 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 So we dance, we dance, we dance. Dance before the law. We dance before the law. We dance before the law. There are about 20 of you that need to praise, not just for yourself, but so that your neighbor can get a victory. You're sitting on this praise, but God says the chains are breaking off when you praise for the person that you're sitting beside. There's somebody in this room that needs a deliverance, that needs a breakthrough. But as you praise, the chains are gonna break. As you begin to praise, the chains that have them bound are going to begin to break. As so I need you to break, lift him up. The chains are going to break. As we give you prayer, come on, begin to pray. The chains are going to break. The chains are going to break. We declare the chains are going to break. We declare it. As we give you prayer, we declare it. The chains are going to break. Break, break, break. Break, break, break. Break, break, break. Break, break, break. Break, off my family. Break, break off my mind. Break off my future. Break off my ministry. Break off my soul. Break off my soul. Break, break, break. Break, break, break. Now come on, praise him here. I said, sis, it's the moment is happening now. If you need breakthrough, I 
need you to bum rush this altar. If you're saying I need this to break today, I need you to come to the altar with your hands lifted and we're going to sing over you. Those of us that are in the audience, we're going to believe God. See, people don't just come to church to come to church. They come to church because they need a breakthrough. They come to church because they want Jesus. That's why an atmosphere has to be set so that this type of breakthrough can happen. Addictions be broken in the presence of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord. Come with your hands in lifted. the presence of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord. Where the Spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord. There is liberty. There is liberty. There is liberty. There's liberty. We're gonna pray for you. Come on, this altar call is gonna be a little different. We're gonna lay hands today. Because what's coming up against you, what's holding you in this moment is bigger than you. But we're gonna conquer it through prayer. And we're believing God that today, that thing that's been holding you bound, we declare a release. Somebody say release. release. We declare a release. 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 I come against the spirit of pride. I come against the spirit of pride first. That will try to hinder you. And keep you out of the presence of God. Come on, I'm that type of person. God, if you find anything, anything, anything in me, get it out of me. <laughs> so we're here today, God, because we need you more. We're here today because we need you in this moment. Come on. So as we come through, I need the praise team is going to continue to sing. But I need you. Because this is why you showed up this morning. I know you came in for your own personal thing, but God said, I want you to be ministers today. And I want you to pray for their breakthrough. And the chains are going to fall off. <laughs> Prophetess, Holy Spirit just said, when we get ready to pray now, here's what I sense in the room. I want our team to get ready because this is about to be quick. I want you to get what you need God to break on your mind and on your lips right now. Because the Spirit of God said to me, when we touch you, it breaks. Today you got to have the faith of the woman with the issue of blood that just says, touch me and I'll be made whole. That's not going to be a lingering. There's going to be immediate breakthrough all over this room. It's going to begin to happen. If you're at your seat right now, I ask you to just stretch your hands this way and help us pray. There are times, yes, we have an order of service. Choir is supposed to be singing. I've got a message, all of that. But Holy Spirit had an agenda to minister to the hearts of people in this moment. And we're going to move with God. And so I want you at your seat. Here's what we're going to do. This is a house where people ought to be able to come to get delivered, ought to be able to come to get healed, ought to be able to come to get a miracle or whatever they need. So I need you as they lift up the sound. They are the frontline soldiers. You are the army. So as they begin to lift their voice, I want you to match their intensity. I want you to match it with your praise. I want you to match it with your intercession. I want you to match it with your dance and breakthroughs hitting this house. Come on, say, he reigns upon the throne. Reigns upon the throne. He reigns upon the throne. 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 Victory is yours. 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 Because he reigns upon the throne. 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 Upon the 
Spirit says you will be the comeback story of the year for your family Holy Spirit is bringing you back from a hard place where you were almost dead the drugs couldn't kill you overdose couldn't kill you Marie you couldn't even take your own life because now the life of God comes into you now may the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead permeate this woman's body now power of the Lord power of the Lord move in the room power of the Lord move in the room power of the Lord move in the room of the Lord moving the room. Come on, pray on those mics. Pray, 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 pray. I said, 
the power of God in the room to change your story. I sense the power of God is here to change your story. Spirit of God told me to tell you this is not the end of your story. I said this is not the end of your story. I said this is not the end of your story. This word right here is for people that have been in a low place, a hard place, a place of failure, a place of disappointment, a place where you thought the Lord had let you down and you had let the Lord down. The Spirit of God told me to tell you that this is not the end of your story. For today you meet the author and the finisher of your faith. And I declare over your life, God is going to bring your life to the story that he intended. I prophesy over you now a future and a hope and an expected end. You will get to God. God's expected end for your life. You are in this room, low place, hard place, far place from God. But you say, God, I'm about to put my script in your hand. And whatever you want to do with the rest of my story, I surrender it to you. When I count to three, that's you. You say, that's, that's me today. I put my script in your hand. I put my life in your hands, and I'm going to let you write the end of the story. That's you today. You say, Lord, only you can rescue me. Only you can alter this story. And that's you, and I count to three. Get to this altar. One, two, three. God, finish my story. Come on, there are people in here. Come on. I don't care how low you've been. Come on, I don't care how low you've been. God, I need you to change my story. Holy Spirit, you are the master editor. You are the master editor. You are the ghost writer. Holy Spirit, come now. Alter these stories. May they end in glory. May they end in glory. I don't know. I need to tell you, I feel, I feel the Spirit of God here to tell you your story will not end in failure. I said it will not end in failure. I said it will not, shall not, cannot end in failure because the pen is in the master's hand and he's not done writing. I, I said he's not done writing. I said he's not done writing. I said he's not, I don't care if the story right now is that you are an addict. God is about to change your story. There's about to be a shift in the story. There's about to be a twist in the plot. Come on, God is turning this thing in your favor. Lift those hands. Lord, whatever you want to do. I give my story to you, whatever you want to do. I give my story to you. You can have it all. You can have it all. You can have it all. I surrender 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 all. Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Come on, lift it. Lord, I give you my story. Lord, I give you my story. Here it is. I give you my life now. Wow. Come here. No blacks. Spread it right. Come here. You desperately don't want your life to end right here. And the Lord says it won't. The Lord says it won't. There's more he has in store for you. There's more he has in store for you. 
there's more he has in store for you. Now here's what the Holy Spirit told me. You've been arrested by shame, guilt, and regret. But the Spirit of God breaks that off of you right now. You can't change yesterday, but you can live today. So now the Spirit of God says to his daughter, live now. I just saw the page turn on yesterday. The chapter just ended on yesterday. And I see a bright future in front of you right now. The Holy Spirit told me to tell you there's redemption in this chapter. Ha! There's redemption in this chapter. There's redemption in this chapter where the Lord makes all things new. Somebody open your mouth and give him glory. Listen. There has been a master edit in this room. Every part of your story that was the opposite of what he wrote for your story, the Lord has edited it. There's a shift in the script. The way your life was headed there was a logical conclusion you were getting ready to come to until this moment. I said until this moment. Because the Holy Spirit is about to make such a turn in the story of your life until people are going to look and say, I didn't see that going there. those hands we surrender all to you we surrender all, we surrender all to you. We surrender all, we surrender all. story new story new story new story somebody lift those hands new story Woo. all right pray with me yes you have the strength and yes you have the grace to endure another change in the story Lord, at this point, yep, right here, right now. You God, I've already been through so many changes and so many chapters. Holy Spirit said, this time you're going to get to where you're going very quickly. Woo, my God. There's no delay in this chapter. No delay in this chapter. God, I can't believe I'm here again. I'm here again. Holy Spirit says, I'm here and I'm working for you. Even when you're sleeping, I'm working. And the Holy Spirit says, because I'm working when you're sleeping, here's what I, you are to do right now, rest. You are to rest. You are not to stress. You are not to strain. You are to rest. Rest in what? Rest in my presence and rest in my promise and rest in the promise that I will take care of you in every season. And the Spirit of God brings a rest on you as He works on your behalf. As He works on your behalf. As He works on your behalf. Somebody open your mouth now. There's grace here for new chapters. There's grace here for new chapters. There's a grace in the room for new chapters, friends. There's grace in the room for new chapters. This next year will be different. 
This next year will be different. The doors are different. The favor is different. Story is different. Someone say yes. Your focus will be different. This is different. This is not where you've been before. This is where you've never been. This door is not even familiar. Only familiarity you will have with it is what you've seen in the spirit. For your spirit has been where you're going. But your life is getting ready to show up there. Get ready to live in your dreams. Tell her her warfare has ended, says the Spirit of God. Don't war, walk in it. Don't war, walk in it, walk in it, walk in it, walk in it. And it is so. came early didn't it chapter came early God just brought chapters you thought were down the road God just brought it back to you right now lift your hands Holy Spirit there's a grace you gave me to step into my calling very early I pray let that grace come on this young man to step into his calling with everything ha! I ask for grace to step into his calling with everything with everything in him not a partial surrender not a partial obedience but today the Lord drastically changes your story listen so when the Lord called me to preach my change look at me was so drastic I got in trouble in my seventh grade year got removed out of basketball for that year because I got in trouble the fall of that year is when the Lord called me to preach. I was in eighth grade. I went back to my seventh grade history teacher to invite her to my first sermon. This was less than a year later. And as I walked out of the room after giving her the invitation, I heard her tell another teacher, that boy preaching, I believe it when I see it. About two years later, she was inviting me to her church to preach. Because when the Lord called me, it was not a partial call. He gave me a grace to give it my all. And God gives you grace today to give it your all. Shh. Woo! Woo! Consuming fire. Consuming fire. Fall on this young man now in Jesus' name. Make all things new for her. Make all things new. God is changing your story. God is changing your story. Bring them close. God is changing your story. God is changing your story. You are the master writer. <laughs> You're changing their story. Ooh. It will end up in glory. Let it end in your glory. Father, as I lay my hands, I release grace. Grace, 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 grace. And it is so. He's changing your story. 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 
Changing your story. Changing your story. Changing your story. Changing your story. Changing your story. Changing your story. He's changing your story. 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 He's changing your story. He's changing your story. Changing your story. Changing your story. He's changing your story. He's changing your story. Changing your story. Changing your story. Changing your story. Change your story. Change the story. Yes, God. Change the story. 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 Habara baris kando do do donde riska prade baras kito de 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 riska pa pa ya pa 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 roko sete lisha do ba ba roko do 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 sita riska tarana na ya so hey 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 change it change the story change the story. Somebody open your mouth and give God glory. Changing your story. 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 Best parts of your story are yet ahead. Best parts, of, best parts of your story are yet ahead. The Holy Spirit says, get your hands ready, for you are have entered reaping season. You will reap the goodness of God. Where you have sown in tears, yes, you're going to reap in joy. Holy Spirit says, for I've repositioned you, and I have reintroduced to you to the you that you are in this season. You are not the you of a former season. You are the you of a new season. And the Spirit of God says, embrace it, because with it comes fresh grace. There it is, like fresh oil, let it run down. Like fresh oil, let it run down. Like fresh oil, let it run down. There it is. In the name of... Woo! Changing your story. Changing your story. Come on, give God a shout of praise all over the house this morning. Come on, give God a shout of praise all over the house this morning. Come on, give him, come on, give him a shout of praise all over the house this morning. Come on, praise him out of your innermost being. Come on, praise him out of your innermost being. Come on, praise him out of your innermost being. Praise him out of your innermost being. Come on, praise him out of your innermost being. Come on, praise him out of your innermost being. Changing your soul. Changing your soul. Changing your soul. Changing your soul. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 
Be seated just for a second. Give me, give me about 10 minutes. I want to give you a word to stand on. Holy Spirit has worked in the room. I want to give you a word to stand on. Somebody said, I already got my breakthrough. I needed to get a word. Let me give you a word. I want you to hear me very carefully in the room. Hear me very carefully in the room. If you're ready to receive a word, let me see you like this. Say, I'm ready. I'm ready. Say, I'm ready. I want to say, I'm ready. All right, I want to see that you're ready. All right. Uh, when we move in moments like that, we're moving um, because we really feel the leading of the Lord. I try to be sensitive to what God is doing coming into every experience. And there are times when we'll just go straight into the Word, just teach that way. Then there are times when, did you see how many people came up to this altar twice? Because there are times when you need to be taught, then there are times when you need to be touched. And we want to be sensitive to when God wants to do either one of them. All right? You guys can just bring it down just for a moment. Let me give them uh, this. We are uh, in a new series called Influencers. Everybody say Influencers. Now, the purpose of that series is to prepare you for what uh, the Lord has shown me is coming to your life and our lives in 2022. Uh, essentially, God is going to put you in a position of influence. Everybody say influence. Now, what I was going to preach about, I, was, I preached in the early service. Hopefully, we caught it. It was a message called Seeds of Greatness, where here's what that means. What God is going to do in your life, ultimately, he has already put in you now in seed form. Okay, so those seeds, number one, are faith. And then it's grace, and then it's uh, potential, then it's the promises of God. And so they're in seed form, and they grow, and they become, and they mature. Amen? Amen. All right, but here's what I want to deal with. I want to deal with potential. I want to deal with that. I want to deal with that thing that's in you that you didn't know was in you. Everybody say, I got it in me. I got it in me. Uh, 2 Peter chapter number 1. Uh, says his divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Then he says, you want to add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. Here's what he says. If you have these things and they abide in you, you will not be unfruitful in the knowledge of God. How many say I want to bear fruit? It is fruit that gives you influence. It is fruit that gives you influence. Now, let me help you. To bear fruit is to come to the full manifestation of the seed that started. Do you hear what I said? Okay. Uh, to bear fruit means I started as an acorn. I ended up an oak tree. Everybody understand that? And so I bear fruit and I come that way. But here's the deal. How do I know what I have? Everybody say, how do I know what God put inside of me? All right, go to Genesis 37. Go to Genesis 37. Y'all add me five more minutes. Y'all started early. Genesis 37, verse number one. Now Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. This is the history of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brothers and the lad with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. Also, he made him a tunic of many colors. Watch this. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Verse number five. This is where I want to hang my hat. Now, Joseph had a dream. And he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more. All right, here we go. Here we go. Everybody say potential. Potential. Potential is what I am, but I am not yet. Potential is all that I could do that I have not done yet, all that I could become that I have not become yet. But what happens is, in order for me to reach my potential, I need to get a revelation. God help me. He says, if you're going to know what God desires to do in your life. Bishop, why is that important to me? Because what God, hear me, is about to do in your life next 
is what he's already doing inside of you now. Hear me, hear me. What God is about to bring forth from your life has been festering in your life before the foundations of the world. The Bible says that before he, you, the time even began, God had called you according to his purpose and his grace. Meaning that before you knew your mama and before your mama knew your daddy, before time began, God knew you. God gave you a purpose and packaged with that a unique grace to do something. Now, this is what's important. Now, the potential of a thing is determined by the caliber of thing that that thing came out of. God help me. Watch this. If you want a strong wooden chair, it's got to come from strong wood. Are you hearing me? If I want to have a, a, a strong wooden device, it's got to come from something that has strong wood. Well, here's the deal. You came from God. And your potential is only as great as what you came out of. So when God decided to make you, he spoke to himself and brought us out of himself with his image and likeness. And therefore, he says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I need you to just elbow your neighbor and say, neighbor, what you need to know is that your next level, you already have it in you. I, was, I feel that right there. Somebody shout, I've already have it in me. And in this season, I'm not waiting on external things to affirm it. I am getting ready to activate everything that God put on the inside of me. I'm about to stir it up. Somebody shout, you have it in you. Watch this. Let me tell you why you've got to put what's in you to work. Because what is about to happen in your life externally will be a reflection of how you allow God to work internally. You need Bible on it? I'm glad you asked. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask or think. Here's what you should expect in 2022. If you can think it, there's going to be more. If you would ask for it, he wants to do more. And it's going to be according to the power that you let work in you. It is going to be according to the degree to which you let the living one live inside of you. Open your mouth and shout yes if you receive that. Many of us are far more acquainted with our external world than we are our internal world. So because we are not acquainted with our inner man, we live from the outside in rather than the inside out. So we are defined by the times rather than defined by eternity. Eternity is hidden in my heart. Eternity hidden in my heart means that thing God was thinking about concerning me before he ever put me in my mother's womb, he hid it in my heart. So every now and then, my heart will have these promptings and longings to do things that are really eternity beating in my chest saying, this is what you're supposed to do. But when you feel that, you look on the outside at all the other circumstances instead of digging in and saying, God, what are you really trying to say to me? Could it be that that thing I was born for before the foundations of the world is demanding activation? Am I preaching to anybody in this room? Is there anybody that says, I can feel my purpose beating out of my chest I can feel the power of God getting ready to explode out of me I got all kinds of stuff happening but in the middle of the drama destiny is making a demand on me and so I got to I got to get acquainted with this thing because God hid it within me watch this when he wove me, let me, let me, let me, I gotta go quick. You can come there if you move quick. Psalm 139, uh, verse number 13. For you formed my inward parts, you covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. When's the last time you told God he did a good job with you? 
God, I'm not saying I don't have some issues, but sir, job well done. When's the last time you thank God? Because you've been looking in the mirror, then looking on your timeline, and you've been comparing yourself and therefore competing and diminishing yourself. But when's the last time you paused and said, God, marvelous are your works, and my soul knows that very well. If anybody knows your good, my soul, my mind, my will, my emotions know your good. Listen. He says, he says, my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret. That'll preach on so many levels because you got to know God makes in secret and he makes in secret. He forms you in the secrecy of your mother's womb and then he forms you in the secrecy of a wilderness. He makes you in the secrecy of your mother's womb. And then he makes you into the man or woman of God you're going to be in the, in the secrecy of the wilderness. When nobody else can really t speak to exactly what you are walking through. It is when you are in a private, hidden, uh, secret place where God does the shaping and the molding. Because sometimes God has to separate you so he can form you perfectly for what he desires to do in your life next. Ah, is there anybody in the room that says, I've been in a place of silence solitude but I can feel God shaping me every now and then you got to turn off the noise and get into the solitude of the secret place and say God shape me into my next being says, says, when I was made in secret watch this and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of so, so you skillfully wrought me you were not a novice. You knew what you were doing. Verse 16. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. You saw my raw material. Everybody else sees the pottery with the chip in it. You saw it when it was nothing but dirt that you had to put water in and pull it together and start to mold it and to shape it so that it would. You saw, I, I don't know why I feel like screaming real quick for somebody in the room that wants to thank God that he saw the raw material that you were and then made you into something special. You saw my substance being yet unformed. And watch this. When you saw the raw material, you started writing. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. When you saw the raw material, you started writing the book. You didn't see the finished product and start writing the book. You wrote the book, then you finished shaping the product. So after he wrote the book, he then came back to the raw material and designed a character that could walk out what was written in the book. That's why I told you God's changing your story. Because he's got a book on you and sometimes the way we live here doesn't match what he wrote there. But he is the editor that has the ability to step in and twist that thing and shift that thing until the story ends up like what he wrote. God knows how to use the rough patches of your story as seasoning so that when you tell your testimony at the end, uh, you feel the pain of the story, but they see the glory. And God, who is... Somebody say, oh, he'll present you faultless. Oh, God. Somebody shout, he's got days fashioned for me. When as yet... There were none of them. So then, how do I live out the story of the book? Well, the story is broken into thoughts. Sentences come from thoughts. How precious also are your thoughts to me. And how great is the sum of them. To know what's written in the book you have to ask God what he's thinking. I've been telling y'all I was going to throw something. That got so good to me, I had to throw something. 
Some of you, here's, here's, here's what the Lord told me to tell you today. Ask him what he's thinking. Here's what I want you to do. All this week, this week will be a week of revelation. I don't even want to talk to you next Sunday if you ain't prayed. I want you to pray. And even if you feel like you don't get an answer, come having prayed because you'll get your answer on the way. But I'm prophesying to you, this will be your week of revelation. Whether it comes in a dream, whether it comes in a vision, whether it comes in a prophecy, whether it comes in a knowing, whether it comes from... This will be your week of revelation. Shout yes! Yeah, just stay right there. Shout yes. Somebody shout, this is my week of revelation. Somebody shout, this is my week of revelation. God's going to show me my future this week. God's going to unpack my next 10 years this week. I'm getting ready to get in the face of God until he gives me a vision that I'm getting ready. This is my week of revelation. Open your mouth and give him glory. Here's what the Lord told me to tell you. You're coming out of the realm, hear me carefully, of eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, and haven't entered into the heart. Because we've been shouting over that long enough. That's 1 Corinthians 2, 9. I need you to fast forward to verse 10. Because verse 9 said, eyes haven't seen it. Verse 9 said, ears haven't heard it. Verse 9 says, it hadn't even entered your heart. But verse 10 says, but God has revealed it by his spirit. This week is my verse 10. This week. Somebody ought to open up your mouth in this room. And you ought to say, God, show me. This is the week. God's getting ready to show me. I dare you to look at your neighbor and say, I don't know what's bothering you. And I don't know if you've seen what God's getting ready to do. But over the next seven days, God's getting ready to show me. He's getting ready to open up my eyes to the future he planned. Somebody open up your mouth and shout yes. Shout yes. Shout yes. Finally, I'm done. There are three primary things I need you to do this week to get a revelation. First thing I need you to do is I need you to meditate on the word. Because revelation flows out of meditation. I need you to meditate on the promises of God. If you got some stuff God said to you and you got it recorded on your phone, listen to it this week. If you got some words that have been spoken like the one today, you need to go meditate on it because revelation comes out of meditation. Are you in the room with me? The next thing I need you to do is pray in the Holy Ghost. Why, Bishop, do I pray in the Holy Ghost? Because your future is a mystery. A mystery is a hidden truth. Here's the good news. A hidden truth, a truth is not a fact. Facts change. Truth remains. It is not hidden because it might be true. It's hidden because it is a true and it's so true that if you get it too early, you won't know how to handle it. And so God has to hide your future in a mystery. Well, he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks mysteries. So when I pray in the Holy Ghost I pray my future that I, my mind can't conceive it my eyes haven't seen it but my future so that when I step into my future I call it deja vu and the only reason it feels like deja vu is because my spirit has been here before somebody tell your neighbor about April of next year I'm going to step into an opportunity and say, my God, I've been here before. Next year, September, I'm going to step through an open door and I'm going to have to pause and say, my God, I've been here before. When did you get there? 
when I was praying in the Holy Ghost I was speaking mysteries listen number one I need you to meditate on the word number two I need you to pray in the Holy Ghost then while you're praying in the Holy Ghost Bible says 1 Corinthians 14 14 pray that you might interpret Yeah, Bishop, because you know, Bishop, when the Bible says when I pray in tongues, my understanding is unfruitful. That's why you got to keep reading, because it says, pray that you might interpret. Interpret is not translation. Interpretation means give me the meaning. So when I start praying in the Holy Ghost, then I pause and say, now, Holy Spirit, show me the meaning. And that's where the meditation comes in. Because then the Holy Spirit, when I have prayed in the Spirit and asked to interpret, will take me back to something I meditated on and say, go read that. And then all of a sudden I take the word I was meditating on and I went from praying in the Spirit to declaring with the understanding what I was meditating on three days ago. Are you in the room with me? Because now I'm going from supplication to declaration and you shall decree a thing. Number one, I need you to meditate on the word. Number two, I need you to pray in the Holy Ghost. Number three, I need you to worship. I need you to clear out your closet, your living room, your office, your car, and I need you to praise him till you pass out in the floor. I need you to worship Till God is so all around you until you have lost sight of you and all there is is him. I'm getting ready to throw a bracelet. I, I said, I need you to worship and I need you to praise him till he's so on you that you're the only one in the room and you don't have a catcher but you still fall out. I need you to Y'all praise him on the instruments real quick. I'm on my way out. Touch your neighbor, send neighbor. I'm getting ready to praise God like I did when I first got saved. I'm getting ready to praise God like I did when he first saved me. I'm getting ready to praise God like I did when he first delivered me. I'm getting ready to give God glory like I did when he first touched me. I'm getting ready to dance in my room when nobody is watching me but God because in his presence there's fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pleasures evermore touch your neighbor on the shoulder and say neighbor and say neighbor and say neighbor I need you to bless God with everything that is in you because when you praise him he'll come on in the room somebody elbow another neighbor and say neighbor there's power in your praise there's power in your praise when you praise him he'll show up in your room when you praise him his power will enter when you praise him I'm telling you the breakthrough is right where you need it when you praise I need you to meditate on the word Pray in the Holy Ghost and then worship and praise God until breakthrough happens in your life. Here's what I need right now. I'm going to give you all 65 seconds in this week of revelation to show me how you're going to praise God all by yourself. Go. dreams father release vision father release revelation father release the breakthrough god give me insight god give me understanding open my eyes so i can see open my ears so i can hear i want to hear you 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 i want to see it i want to see it i want to see it 
I want to see it. See your will. See your plan. See your glory. I want to see it. 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 See, I want to see, I want to see, see your glory, see your power, I want to see it. Come on, bless him in the room. Everybody say, this week, is my week of revelation. Gentlemen, will you put that giving information right on the screen? We're getting ready to give today. We prayed, we prophesied, we've laid hands, we've taught the word. That information right there on the screen. I want you to get ready to give. Listen carefully. Bring it out just a little bit. Keep that beat. Listen very carefully. Here's what I want you to do today as you get ready to give. As you get ready to give today and honor the Lord with your giving. Once you have it up on your device, or if you need an envelope, wave your hand. If you need an envelope, wave your hand. It's first Sunday. Everybody say it's offering time. Here's my prayer. I want us to have such a spirit of generosity on us that we get excited when it's time to give because we understand the generous spirit of our God. Amen. Amen. So we're ready to give our tithe today and give our offering. Not only that today, give me one of those re-envision cards. If you've not had the opportunity yet to make your commitment to our re-envision campaign, what about this campaign? It's for you. It's for the future. It's for the city. Somebody say yes. Everybody say this is for us. All right. And so uh, what we're doing, believing God to upgrade our technology so that we can enhance our life-changing experiences. I want to pour into our next generation a considerable amount. I want to dedicate to them. Uh, then we're also giving towards human resources, making sure that we have the ability uh, to staff the way we need to serve you all the way we need to serve you and empower you to make your lives uh, fully alive. And then number four, to advance the kingdom of God. So we want to continue to get the message out. We're believing God for uh, several on each of these levels. I'll talk about it probably more next week. Uh, but dreamers, those who commit between now and Resurrection Weekend, which is April 15th, the 17th of 2022. Dreamers are committing $10,000. Mountain Movers, $5,000. Multipliers, $2,500. Influencers, $1,000. Builders, $500. My 10-year-old committed $1,000 already. He told me, he said, Daddy, I want to be a builder. So he's taking some of his birthday money and giving it towards being an influencer. Isn't that awesome? And I'm excited because some people are not even a part of our church, but they heard what God is doing. They said, well, hey, we wanna, I want to give $2,500 towards that so y'all put us down, and we're going to be what they call it, a multi multiplier. Isn't that awesome? And so people are seeing it, and they're not even in the house and committing to it. So I know the Lord's going to help us do this, all right? So we gave a breakdown. You guys have that for us, just a breakdown, what you can give monthly or weekly uh, in order to accomplish those various levels between now and then. There's that breakdown. Hopefully you can see it well. Uh, if not, it's right there on the card for you. But if you'll give us what your commitment is, you can scan right there on the back of this QR code. You can scan it, and then you can uh, download that. We want to be praying for you. 
they got to give seed to the sower. Amen. So I shared that vision. You can go to our, our uh, Facebook page and watch the video if you want more details of what it's about. Uh, I just laid it out there for you, what it is, what it costs, what it's going to accomplish for us. And uh, that's the way I'm going to do that. I'm going to tell you what God has put on our heart to do, lay it out in front of you, show you all how we can get there together. Amen. How many can appreciate that? That's what we're going to do. Amen. And we'll get there together. If we will follow even the monthly commitments, monthly to weekly, by the time we get to January, we'll be able to make the orders we need for the platform and the updates we need to make. Amen. So if we'll track that way, we'll be right where we need to go. All right. Amen. Is everybody ready? Everybody got your giving? All right. If you're giving through your device, hold your phone up. If you're giving through an envelope, hold your envelope up. Here's what you're going to do real quick. If you got an envelope, you're going to run out here. You're going to put it on. You're going to lay it on this platform. If you got a phone, you're going to run it up here. You're going to touch that platform with your phone. Run back to your seat, and then we're going to get ready to dismiss you. Can we do that? One, two, three. Come on. Come on. <laughs> 